Deep in St James Village lockup is one of the few surviving in Lincolnshire. The only other one I can find is located in Digby, 20 miles north of Grantham. And Grantham, you'll no doubt be aware, is the origin of Tory scum Maggie Thatcher. Grantham is also the birthplace of my uncle, who, unlike Thatcher, is a much loved and respected individual. Thatcher lived in her father's grocery shop on the corner of North Parade and Broad Street. And according to Tarquin, her father, known locally as Cocky Roberts, used to touch up his shop girls. Perhaps this is why Thatcher was so comfortable with all the paedophiles in her government, like Leon Britton, Peter Morrison, Keith Joseph, Rhodes Boyson, Alistair McAlpine, etc, etc, etc. Village lockups were used as holding cells before the 1839 County Police Act was passed. This act was hastily pushed through Parliament to counteract the Chartist movement that was increasing in popularity and becoming an establishment threat. Prior to this act, there were no local police forces, so no police stations with cells. A London police force, however, had been formed ten years earlier under the 1829 Metropolitan Police Act. Before the County Police Act, village order was kept by the parish constable, who usually worked under direction from the Justice of the Peace. The position of parish constable was unpaid, and filled in turn by members of the community. Parish constable could be an unpopular post, as it took the holder away from his regular paid work. But refusing to accept your term was punishable by a fine. And indeed, some preferred to pay the fine rather than undertake the role. One can assume constable would also be a much sought after position for some, and their corruption no doubt equalled their modern day counterpart. Deep in St James Lockup is a rare piece of architecture for a raised culture to feature. We normally slum it with urban decay and grade 2 listed buildings, but this is a grade 1 listed building. According to Historic England, at this 2016 time of writing, England hosts 376,470 listed buildings in three categories. Grade 2, forming 92%, Grade 2 star, 5.5%, and Grade 1 with 2.5%, which in my calculations is 9,411.75 Grade 1 listed buildings. Hmm... 0.7 of a building. That's the joy of percentage rounding, I suppose. A lockup wasn't the structure's original purpose. It was converted from a village cross. And what is a village cross, you ask? Let's see what historic England have to say. Thankfully, there are no percentages in their description. A standing cross is a free standing upright structure, usually of stone, mostly erected during the medieval period. Standing crosses served a variety of functions. In churchyards, they served as stations for outdoor processions, particularly in the observance of Palm Sunday. Elsewhere, standing crosses were used within settlements as places for preaching, public proclamation and penance, as well as defining rites of sanctuary. Standing crosses were also employed to mark boundaries between parishes, property or settlements. A few crosses were erected to commemorate battles. Some crosses were linked to particular saints, whose support and protection their presence would have helped to invoke. Crosses in marketplaces may have helped to validate transactions. After the Reformation, some crosses continued in use as foci for municipal or borough ceremonies. 
for example as places for official proclamations and announcements. Some were the scenes of games or recreational activity. Standing crosses were distributed throughout England and are thought to have numbered in excess of 12,000. From its medieval construction until its 1819 conversion, Deep in St James possessed a standard, not particularly interesting village cross. But the lockup adaption produced a far more stimulating formation. Unless, of course, you found yourself a resident. Standing 4 metres tall, on a 3.7 metre square base, it resembles the dimensions greedy contemporary house builders would describe as spacious, but any sensible person would describe as tiny. Current house builders may well have been influenced by the lockup, as its 1819 constructors deemed its inadequate space suitable to hold three prisoners. Two steps surround the chamber, above which sits a chamfered plinth forming rest for the cross space. Of quadrangular design, the cross space's limestone sides are adorned with perpendicular style architectural panels circa 15th century. The next layer up is a band of crenellation, inscribed with crosses and the words and numerals, rebuilt AD 1819. Finally, there's a quadrangle chamfered plinth holding a sharply chamfered slab which tapers upwards to a carved architectural fragment. The north sighted wooden entrance door leads to the brick-lined and whitewashed chamber, where east, south and west walls possessed recessed wall seating and prisoner tethering chains. The narrow door bars make it difficult to photograph the chamber, but the south wall with recessed seating can be seen, along with the prisoner tethering chain. An information sign erected outside the lockup states a long-spouted tea kettle was thrust between the bars for refreshment if the occupants were lucky. Deeping, like all village lockups, could find itself holding those accused of a myriad of crimes and misdemeanours. But it appears to have functioned predominantly as a drunk tank, with detainees being released the next day, suffering no further consequences. <laughs> <laughs>